Hi kids, Miss Block here, and today we are going to continue our journey in exploration of surface processes by examining the erosion and deposition of running water. As always, you should have your notes handy, your earth science reference tables, and something to write with. If you find yourself confused or lost about any concepts, feel free to pause, rewind, review, or rewatch the video in its entirety to understand. You ready? Let's get started. So we've been just talking about erosion extensively in class. And if you recall, erosion is the transportation of weather sediments from one location to another. So after we've broken down those sediments, we need to take them from point A and move them down to point B. After we've moved those sediments, we're going to have deposition take place. And that is the depositing or dropping off of those weathered and eroded sediments. As we discussed in class, there are four unique agents of erosion. They are gravity, running water, wind, and glacial erosion, aka moving ice. This video, we're going to focus on running water. If you recall, running water is the most common and most effective at wearing down of Earth's surface. It is the most influential agent of erosion at carving and shaping Earth's surface. Running water includes all the water that falls on Earth and then moves downhill under the pull of gravity. Don't forget, gravity is the driving force behind all erosion on Earth. However, like previously stated, running water is the most influential and the biggest factor. There are several factors that will influence the movements of sediments in a stream. We're going to look at a few of them right now. One such factor is the gradient, or the slope of the stream. So if you look right here, I have some axes set up to represent the relationship between gradient and stream velocity. Right? So as our gradient, or as our slope increases, what would happen to our stream velocity, or the speed at which the water is flowing in the stream? it would increase, so steeper the slope, the faster the water would move. It should be noted right now also that if you have a steep gradient, which gives you that really intense velocity, that high velocity, you can now carry more sediments in that stream, thereby increasing the amount of erosion that can take place. So the steeper the gradient, the greater the velocity, the greater the amount of erosion that can take place. If we were to slow down that velocity or have a more gentle slope, which would give us that slower velocity, you would actually deposit more sediments. Keep that in the back of your mind as we go through some later things. Another factor is the amount of discharge, or the volume of water in the stream, or the amount of water in the stream. We can increase the discharge in the stream by increasing the amount of precipitation. When snow melts, it's going to go somewhere or go into the stream. So those are ways you could actually increase the volume of water in that stream or the discharge. If we increase the amount of discharge in the stream, we'll also increase that stream velocity. And like we stated earlier, if you increase the stream velocity, you can increase the amount of erosion. So more discharge then means more erosion can take place because of that greater velocity. Another factor that we can look at is the shape of the channel that the stream is flowing through. Right here you can see from our notes the three different examples that were given. And while A and B look drastically different, they actually have the same perimeter area. A has a perimeter of 12 units and so does B, even though A is very wide and B is very narrow. C, on the other hand, though, has a smaller perimeter, about 8 units. So to represent what I just said graphically, the amount of bed touching water, or how much of the sediments or the walls of the stream channel are touching the water, how will that increase or decrease the velocity? How will that change the velocity? It's actually an inverse relationship. The more the water is touching the stream banks, the slower the stream velocity will be. This is due to the amount of friction that will be caused. Now the channel shape also includes some other aspects, such as right here. So if you're looking right here at this picture, if you recall, these bends, they're called meanders. 
and these meanders play a big role in the amount of deposition and erosion that can take place in the stream. So if we look on the outside of those meanders, the water is going to move faster. And remember, if I said greater velocity means we're going to have greater erosion. Likewise, if we look on the inside of those meanders, it's going to have much slower velocity. Slower velocity means more deposition or dropping off of those sediments. Whenever you see a picture like this, I highly recommend that you label where it's faster or slower and you mention where erosion deposition takes place, just like in this picture right here. So you can see in this picture, we have our erosion on the outside of the meander and deposition on the inside. Look right here as well. This is a great way to remember where erosion and deposition take place and why they take place in those locations. If you remember the phrase or mnemonic, dis-fo, deposition, inside, slower, faster, outside, erosion. That will help you remember where in the meander it takes place and why it takes place in those spots. Now, we also know that depositions on the inside of the meander, erosion on the outside, but we should also realize that deposition takes place at the delta. And at the delta, when the velocity slows down a lot with the water, we will see some sort of sorting take place, known as horizontal sorting. This picture comes right from your notes, and we can see right here that the larger sediments are deposited right by the mouth of the stream. And as the stream water moves out farther and farther into the still water, you can see that the particles get smaller and smaller. So we're going to go from larger particles, or larger sediments, to smaller sediments. So boulders, cobbles, and pebbles, all the way to clay and chemical sediments. Those are like our dissolved ions and whatnot. Now, I want to take a moment to look right here at this meander, and we're going to zoom right in. And we're going to look at a particular cross-section as we zoom in. And I've labeled it right here A and B. So if we see A is where deposition is taking place, and B is where erosion is taking place. So if we were to get a cross-section across this area that I zoomed in on, on A and B, we would see that the channel shape is not that perfect semicircular. It has kind of like a, um, like a disjointed area. It's not a perfect U. So if we recall, you will see that deposition will occur on the inside, where we have the slower velocity, and erosion will happen on the outside with the faster velocity. What ends up happening is that we'll have a lot of deposition of sediments on the inside. So we'll have that real gentle slope that you can see right there at A. Because right where that fish is beneath it, that's where all the sediments were dropped off. They weren't carried along like they were at B. So B is nice and deep because we've had that transportation or erosion of all those sediments. You should be able to draw a cross section like this for any meander and make sure that you can place it appropriately. So it should be deeper where the erosion of sediments are on the outside of the meander, and it should be more shallow where the deposition of sediments are okay, on the inside of the meander. Now this all plays into the stages of stream development. So everything we talked about, you wouldn't see it maybe in every stream, but you would see bits and pieces. So in a younger stream, you would have that narrow channel with that steep gradient. You would also have the river flowing much more quickly because of those two factors. As the stream gets older, you will start to see a widening of the floodplain and more and more meanders. The velocity would slow down as the stream gets older, and the gradient would become more gentle. When you have a flatter or more gentle slope, you can have more of those meanders. Also, I want you to notice, especially with the younger stream, you'll have that V-shaped valley. Don't forget, rivers and streams make a V-shaped valley, and the word river has the V right in there to help you remember the shaped valley that it creates. Last but not least, how can we tell that something has been weathered and eroded by running water? We can look at the sediments. Sediments that have been transported by streams will be rounded and smooth, 
they'll also be smaller due to the abrasion that they've undergone as they've been bumping and grinding against the other rocks in the stream. They will also be sorted, just like we saw before. I hope that you found this helpful. Again, watch it over. Take care and have a great day. Hope to see you in extra help. Bye-bye.